Hello, I'm Austin Meyer and I wrote X-Plane. So people email me sometimes with the same question and I get it kind of a lot. And that question is, why isn't the airplane in X-Plane doing what I expect? <laughs> and it takes a lot of forms. Sometimes this is somebody commanding an airplane to do a thing and they're just not getting the response they're looking for. Sometimes it's the airplane doing a thing uncommanded, like pitching up when you lower the flaps, for example. Sometimes somebody watches a live stream on YouTube and says, well, that person didn't seem able to control the airplane very well. And so when I get these emails, my instinct is always to say, all right, let me talk you through all the different ways you can get data from X-Plane to figure out why the airplane is doing what it's doing. But what's now occurring to me after I've sent the same email out like hundreds of times is why don't I make a YouTube video to explain it and then I can just hand out the link to everyone. So this is that YouTube video. How do I tell why X-Plane is doing what it's doing? So let's start off with a hypothetical case here. I'm gonna unpause this sim. And here we are on the runway in uh, my Lancer Evolution 844 X-Ray. This is a plane I fly for real and I have a really quite perfect model of it in the sim. And let's go ahead and set the camera up behind the airplane. And I'm at V, I'm turning off the brakes. And I'm gonna add a bunch of power. And then as I add power, whoa, 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 this airplane's going off the left, we're gonna crash, whoa. Pause. That airplane just went off to the left. I did not put in any left rudder and it shot off to the left all by itself. Why is this a bug in the X-Plane flight model? What's going on? This video is gonna try and di diagnose what's causing this and many other things that leave people unprepared as well. So the first diagnostic tool that I want to bring to bear here to find out why I yanked off to the left I've already demonstrated. It's probably the most important key on your keyboard when you're flying X-Plane. And that key is the P key. Pause. <laughs> the first thing I do when I cannot figure out why an airplane is doing a thing is I hit the P key. Pause the sim. And let's think for a moment about what we just saw. Why did it happen? Can we recreate it? Well, the very first thing we need to do is remove wind from the equation. What if there was a big crosswind blowing from the left to the right side of your screen here? Can you guarantee there's no crosswind? I can't. I don't see what the wind is right now. Well, okay, so there's a windsock right there, but pretend you couldn't see the windsock uh, or pretend the windsock might be wrong. Um, why did we pull to the left? We can all look at a big tail on this airplane and see that a wind moving from left to right would cause a weather vane to the airplane to weather vane right off the runway. Could that be what happened? Was there a microburst or a wind shear or a crosswind? I don't know. Do you? <laughs> if you don't, you better find out because removing the wind from the equation is the first step in figuring out what the airplane is doing. Let's do that. Flight menu, flight configuration, Take this little slider. You see the slider right here? Drag it to clear. When you drag the slider to clear, this does more than get rid of clouds. It also gets rid of the wind. And anytime anybody says, why is the airplane doing a certain thing? Well, airplanes react to the wind. If you're confused about why the airplane is doing a thing, let's remove wind from the equation. Pull that out. That's step one in your diagnostics. Get the weather to clear, not just to get rid of clouds so you can see what's going on and get rid of the turbulence and bumpiness in the clouds as well, by the way, but also to remove wind from the equation. The X-Plane flight model is a complicated piece of math. Why throw in a bunch of wind to confuse you if you're trying to figure out what the flight model is doing? So whenever I run flight test in X-Plane, the first thing I do is get that wind out of there. <laughs> and I'm not the first one to do this. I'm sure when people flight test real airplanes, they like to do it on days that aren't too windy as well. Get rid of the wind. That's job one. Next, we're going to start by setting the time of day to noon. We'll change that in a minute. But 
Uh, the next thing we'll do is restart the craft at a known condition. Let's just say Burlington Airport runway 33. So what we've done here is we've, we've brought the first diagnostic tool to bear, which is time. <laughs> Hit the pause button, give you time, time to think. The next thing we did is remove weather from the equation, remove wind from the equation. The next thing we've done is set ourselves up in the middle of the day so we can see what the heck we're doing and we're setting ourselves up on a runway so we can try the whole thing again. Again. All right, here we go. We're going to try again, this time with wind, clouds, all removed from the equation. Here we go. All right, behind the airplane, let's see if it still pulls to the left when I add power. Let's see if my simulator is wrong. Okay, sitting here on the runway, add a little power. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's there, it goes off left again. Pause. Okay, off to the left it went. Why is something wrong with my simulator? Plenty of commenters on YouTube would say, yeah, there is. Let's find out. Now, remember how I said the first thing you want to do is set that time of day? Well, the third thing you want to do is set the time of day to day so you can see what's going on. I'm going to walk that back a little bit. Hit Shift L, Shift L. Make it so it's kind of dim, kind of late in the day. Make it so it's kind of dark. Shift L. You can still see what's going on, but it's a little dark. All right, now Shift L. Now the next thing I want you to do is hit Command M. Command M. Boom. There we go. You see up here, element wind delta. Element wind delta. Delta means difference. Difference between two things. The element wind delta. These little white lines that we see here are the element wind difference on this bit of the airplane compared to the speed of the aircraft itself. So what we see here is you can imagine each of these lines is a little yarn. Imagine each line is a piece of white yarn that someone taped to the aircraft and then that yarn is blowing in the wind. Well, from looking at this, doesn't it look to you like here on the vertical stabilizer, the pieces of yarn are blowing out to the right? And if the pieces of yarn are blowing out to the right, isn't it obvious that the tail would go out to the right? And if the tail is getting kicked out to the right by the wind blowing, isn't it obvious that the nose is going to go to the left? Well, let's use my favorite number one key to look at this for a moment. The P key. Unpause. Pause. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I just don't like to run airplanes off the runway, even in the simulator. Um, so what on earth is going on? Why are these little bits of yarn blowing out to the right? They are clearly, as we've now discovered, pulling the airplane's tail to the right. But why is it? Well, let's hit command M again. Okay, now we see the speed, the speed in knots. Look at the little title up here. Element wind delta plus knots. Damn, we got a, uh, a 35, maybe 36 knot wind now blowing across the stabilizer at an angle. Ham, girl. It's from a show. Okay, let's hit uh, command M again. And now we're gonna see the forces. Look, element forces. You can see there's actually some yellow lines here. There's a force on the stabilizer pulling to the right. And look, the landing gear is pulling you to the left. This is clearly an airplane that's getting pulled to the left because the tail is getting shoved over to the right. You can see these forces pulling the tail to the right. Why? What did I do wrong with my code to make that happen? Hit Command M again. Now we've added how close each element is to its stalling angle of attack. Well, that's all green. That means nothing's stalled. How about element stream wind delta? What? Look at this. This is not just a pretty little thing meant to bamboozle people. Oh, no. This is how the wind is being affected by something other than just the airplane moving through the air. This is how the wind is affected at many different points in space. And if you look, you can see that up above, up above the airplane, kind of the top of the airplane, the wind's getting shoved off to the right. That is clearly what's catching this vertical stabilizer and kicking the tail to the right. What about down below? 
the air is getting kicked to the left. On the left side of the airplane, the air is getting kicked up. And on the right side of the airplane, the air is getting kicked down. Well, I must have made a lot of programming errors, huh? Look at all of these deltas or differences in the air. It's a big spiral. Now, every pilot watching is sitting here rolling their eyes, wondering when I'll state the obvious, which is what we're seeing is coming clearly from the propeller. What we're seeing is the spiraling slipstream of air that is induced by the prop. And when that spiraling slipstream of air spins around the airplane, it smacks onto the right side of the vertical stabilizer, which pushes a vertical stabilizer off to the right, which of course pushes the nose to the left. Let's hit Command M again. Well, now we see some speeds. That's too much information for me. Ooh, this isn't. Look at that, streamlines. You know, in the car commercials, they put the smoke, you know, in the air in front of the car. And then, you know, oh, what do you know? The smoke moves over the car. Who saw that coming? But uh, what we do here is I drop little imaginary breadcrumbs, if you will. Or imagine little LED lights on little parachutes or something like that in the slipstream. And then I actually follow that little LED light as it moves from point to point uh, down the length of the airplane, uh, following that wind delta at each little bit of the airplane in space. And so, what do you know? You can actually see a little bit of that. Oh, there, there we go. Look at that, that is nice. You can see that spiraling slipstream. Isn't that cool? And so what we've got here is a spiral slipstream coming off the prop around the airplane, hitting the vertical stabilizer, pushing the stab to the right, and therefore the nose to the left. And that's why this airplane pulls to the left when you add power. All propeller planes will do this, single engine props especially. So what is interesting about this is I've just shown you a handful of diagnostic techniques. First and foremost, the pause button. Give yourself a chance to think. Next, the set weather to clear button. Get the wind out of the equation. Next, setting the airplane up where you started to try it again. This time while you're paying attention, you're watching carefully, and there's no wind to further confuse the matter. Next, command M to walk through and see all the forces on the airplane. And if you can bring these diagnostic techniques to bear, you can catch things like for example, why on earth is the airplane pulling off to the left when I add power? And the answer is obviously P factor coming back from the prop. It's all the pilots watching already knew. All right, let's keep going. We're not done yet. I'm going to reset this thing because I don't want to run off the runway because I don't feel like it. The next thing we want to do maybe is figure out not just why is the airplane doing what it's doing, but we want to know why the heck we don't seem to get good control of the airplane. Let's take a look at that. Now we're gonna talk about control of the aircraft. Does the airplane react to what you want it to do? Let's go up here to the right-hand menu to our settings. Go to our joystick screen and I'm not going to make this a video on how to calibrate your joystick. You probably already know that. And if not, well, you can figure it out on your own time. The UI is pretty friendly. But I want to go to a really important button here called control sensitivity. If you have the control sensitivity uh, for max fine grained control near the center, you are going to have almost no authority until you go full-scale deflection. And the reason is, what we've done now is we've taken this little joystick and we've made it so that moving the stick a lot moves the controls on the airplane a little. And when you move the controls here a lot and it moves the controls on the airplane a little, yeah, that gives you fine-grained control. But you're not gonna get the full authority that you want unless the stick goes all the way over hard over to the stop, which is not the way anybody, any pilot ever wants to fly. So the next thing I would strongly recommend after you've gotten rid of the wind is take all of these axes and bring them right back down to zero. And trust me, I'm tempted to delete this entire feature from X-Plane so they're always at zero and you cannot move the controls away from zero even if you want to. But um, for now, I'm gonna leave them in there because some joysticks are super noisy and people want fine control of the airplane even so. But set these pitch roll and yaw to zero. Zero percent. Why zero percent? 
That is fully linear. No fine-grained control near control center. This is fully linear. Now, here is what is so absolutely beautiful about that. With this thing set to linear, Helps you for joystick because it's on the keyboard. Huh. Ooh, those streamlines are freaky. Let's go and hit Command M to get those streamlines off. Now, hit Command K, we'll make it daytime. With controls at linear, let's see if the controls really move in a nice linear way with the joystick. I'm moving the joystick right now. And yeah, that's moved all the way. That's moved about halfway. It's about halfway in the direction, and that's all the way. Good, good, nice and linear. What about ailerons? That's moved about halfway, and that's moved all the way. It's about twice as much. Good, a nice linear, linear control. And what this linear control does is guarantees that I have decent control authority at all deflections. Because if you have these controls set, here, let me show you. Let me show you what happens. If we go back here to control sensitivity, we're like, oh no, I want fine-grained control at the center. Well, okay, <laughs> I've got the controls deflected a lot here in the ailerons, and it's not moving the control much at all because it's so non-linear. <laughs> you have to move the stick all the way to the end to get anything out of that aileron. Same with the elevator. I'm deflecting my joystick kind of a lot, but I'm getting very little deflection. It's only at the very end that you get any control through. It's not a great way to fly an airplane. Here, I've got my rudder significantly twisted, and it's only at the very end that the effectiveness comes in. And so what this does is it means you can move the stick a lot in the center and hardly get any deflection on the airplane. Yeah, okay, fine, that gives you fine-tuned control, but it means you don't get the authority that you want, not until the very end. So. Let's go back to control sensitivity and put these at zero. Now, if the stick is deflected 20%, the controls are deflected 20%. Ha ah, so much nicer. So that's the next trick you wanna do. Okay, let's now talk about control authority. No, no. Let's do something even more fundamental and important. Data output. This is critical. Go to data output. Y'all see how I did that? I come up here to the little graphics equalizer setting and I go to data output. Whatever box we check here on the left, that's gonna go to the cockpit display. The next one over is gonna go to data graph. The next one is gonna go to a little text file if you wanna load it into Excel. The next one's gonna go to network via UDP if somebody wants to write a little app to read UDP data out of X-Plane. We're just gonna do show in cockpit for this video. This is where you can output what the heck the airplane is doing. Let's say, for example, that you move the joystick over to the right, but the airplane doesn't bank to the right. Uh, so let's go to joystick aileron elevator rudder. When I go to joystick aileron elevator rudder, this is going to indicate what the actual joystick deflection is, according to X-Plane, what the, the actual joystick is doing, how much is deflected. I'm going to go to another one. Flight controls aileron, elevator, and rudder. Joystick is one thing. That's how much you've actually moved this little piece of plastic on your desk. Um, flight controls here, line 11, that is how much the controls in the airplane have actually moved. Aha, two different things. So now let's get back in the airplane. And if I think this airplane isn't doing what it's supposed to, let's see if the flight controls actually moved as much as they're supposed to. So I'm gonna move hard over to the right on my aileron. All right, now whether YouTube is gonna go up to a high enough resolution to let you see this, I don't know. Whether you're running this at a high enough res to read this, I don't know. You may be well advised to put this on the highest possible resolution setting in YouTube so you stand some sort of a chance of reading these numbers. I've pushed the joystick all the way over to the right here and sure enough, look, the aileron joystick is all the way over to the right and the aileron surface is all the way over to the right. We've got an aileron we can bring to the right. What about to the left? There's negative one. Negative one on the joystick deflection, negative one on the flight control. Why would the joystick and the flight control be different? And the answer might be artificial stability, autopilot, plug-in, 
flight control that you failed, either randomly or manually in the, in the failures uh, menu. A million and one things can interrupt that control continuity from the joystick to the flight control. I want to know what I'm getting out of that dang flight control and what I'm getting out of that dang joystick. This tells me. Now I'm going to pull the stick all the way back. There we go. The stick goes to 1.00. That's 100%. And the elevator goes to 1.00. That's 100%. All the way forwards, negative 1. Negative 1.0 in the stick, negative 1.0 in the elevator. Looks to me like my joystick is calibrated right. Yay me. Uh, same on the rudder. Negative, uh, positive 1 is right, negative 1 is left. So what we've just done with this little bit of diagnostic is we proved that my little piece of plastic, you know, Sidewinder joystick here is calibrated properly and that there are no plugins, failures, trims, autopilots, or anything else getting in the way, stopping that control input from my joystick from making it to the carbon fiber out of the extremities of the airplane. And I can promise you that's the number one thing on my mind when I fly the real airplane. And uh, it's a great diagnostic tool in the sim as well. All right, so let's go for a little flight here. Oh, what do you know? I'm having to add a lot of right rudder to keep this thing straight as I add power. Oh, look at that. And now, of course, you know exactly why. All right, we'll get this thing in the air here. Get that gear up. All right, and then just because it's cool. Zoom. Okay, so. Here we go out of Burlington, Vermont. Oh, it looks like it's leaf peeping season. Everybody's asked for seasons on the, in x -Plane. So we have seasons now. We're starting to get a little bit of leaf peeping in Vermont. How pleasant. Okay, so up we go. And uh, let's take a look at what flight controls do to the airplane. I think I am a fan of hitting Command M, right? We do Command M for diagnostics. I'm gonna go Command M until I get to Element Forces. Then I'm gonna hit Shift L to make the time later to make the airplane nice and dark so I can really see the forces. And so here we are behind the airplane. And why don't we just take a little look at this bird right now? And if anybody wants to think that I was uh, lazy <laughs> when I coded X plane, hopefully this will this will clarify that. Um, what we've got is lift, of course, across the wings. The green line is lift. Uh, the yellow line is lift that's coming inwards. Lift coming inwards? What? Why? Well, because the airplane has dihedral. The wings don't go straight out to the side. They're angled up a little bit. And because they're angled up a little bit and the lift actually, you know, operates at a right angle to the wing, well, most of it goes up, but some of it comes inboard because of the way the wings are aimed. Hmm, now you know. Okay, so we've got this lift coming up on the wings, but look, there's a whole lot of lift right here and not so much lift here. Why? There's not so much lift here, but there's a lot more out here. Look why this wingtip is getting more than this. Why is that? Well, as many of you already know, and some the rest of y'all are about to learn, it's again, it's our propeller. It's our friend, the propeller. The propeller is putting a spiral slipstream that is circling around the airplane like this. And as it circles around the plane, it goes boom and smacks into the bottom of the wing and gives more lift here and goes boom and smacks into the top of the wing and gives left lift here, less lift here, which of course will cause the airplane to roll to the right. And if we don't feel like rolling to the right, then maybe we move the stick to the left just a little bit, drop the sailor on down a little bit, get a little more lift out of this wing, a little less lift out of this wing to compensate for that prop effect. And that's what keeps the airplane level. And you can see it. And what do you know, a little bit of left aileron is in there too, about 5%. And as well, you can really see that P factor on the horizontal stabilizer. Got a lot more here, a lot less here as the, the prop is hitting the stabilizer in this spiral. And it's smacking into the, the right side of that vertical stab, pushing the vertical stab off to the right. And so these forces really show you what's going on with the airplane. And so let's say, for example, that you wanted to put in uh, a bunch of left roll, but the airplane just didn't seem to be rolling left. Well, let's find out. I'm putting hard left roll in three, two, one now. Boop. Okay, there we go. And again, my favorite diagnostic was then brought to bear, the P key. Pause, look at the airplane, give yourself a moment to think. And wow, talk about a case study in ailerons, huh? 
this aileron dropped down, made a boatload of lift to, left, to lift the side of the wing up. This aileron acted as a spoiler and really reduced the lift on that wing a bit. And so you can see the aileron's actually rolling the wing. And if you're ever looking at an airplane and X-plane, you're like, I tried to put in some roll, but it didn't do it. Why? Well, now you can see. You can go up here to the joystick data output to see if your joystick is calibrated properly and putting an in input. You can put your flight control data output. You can see whether or not the joystick is actually making it to the flight control. You can uh, hit command M until you get to element forces. See if the flight controls are actually deflecting in such a way uh, that is gonna give you the differential forces on the airplane. This is how you can see what's going on with your airplane. All right. Uh, and then you can see as I pull the, the stick back, um, we're really getting uh, some, some push down, especially out here at the tips where the elevator gets uh, larger in cord. Um, so we see um, the data output and the uh, command M functions here. Why don't we go to a, a little more complicated case? Let's get something that's a little more complicated but I still fly it myself. I don't leave it to the computers. So uh, let's get into uh, the Boeing 737. Here we go. Let's go ahead and get the gear up. Let's see if this airplane has the roll authority that we expect it to get. So we're sitting here, level of flight, hands off the stick. Now what I'm gonna do is bring in full left, ho ho, and pause. And so sure enough, we can see visibly that these spoilers popped up, okay? You can see those spoilers pop up visibly. But here's the thing. It might be easy for someone that makes an airplane to animate the spoilers as moving in his 3D model, but not actually deploy the spoilers in X-Plane in the flight model, right? It's like a person with a Halloween mask on. They might try to convince you they're doing something they're really not or that they are somebody they aren't. Just like this, uh, this 3D object file is basically a Halloween mask, I'm less interested in, in the Halloween mask and more interested in who's wearing it <laughs> and what they're really going to do. Um, and I'm less interested in this fancy, pretty 3D object right now than I am in the physical flight model that's really going on. And so when I deflected the, uh, the joystick here to the side, I didn't just look to see that the, the spoilers popped up here visibly. I didn't just look to see that this aileron popped up here visibly. I didn't just look to see this aileron drop down here visibly. I wanna see what's really happening in the flight model. And that is clearly telegraphed to us by the forces, isn't it? Look here, the, the lift is dumped the aileron has popped up. The lift here is completely spoiled. These roll spoilers have come up. The lift here is exaggerated. This aileron has dropped down. And so you can see the ailerons and the roll spoilers all working together to deploy, uh, to deploy and deflect the, the, the wing and the airplane therefore off to the left. And so what we've just done is some diagnostics that took us everywhere from joystick calibration to joystick linear controls so that we can see in control sensitivity so that we have linear direct control of the joystick to data output about the joystick and the flight controls that you see up here to the actual forces that act on the airplane as a result of all those things. You see how we followed the trail of breadcrumbs from a piece of plastic on our desk to a bunch of forces acting on a flight model. These are the diagnostics people need to learn so they can understand why the airplane is doing what it's doing if the airplane's not following my piece of plastic joystick like I expected. And so this is a more complicated case. All right, let's get uh, our little bird right side up here. All right, I feel like we've done a decent job of start. Oh, I'll show you another one real quick. Um, let's get back in my airplane. Um, another thing that people sometimes complain about with X-Plane when they think the sim is wrong and it's not, is when they lower the flaps and the nose of the airplane comes up. I'll do a special YouTube video on this in the next couple days or so uh, where I proved you that X-Plane is right. I'll lower the flaps in my airplane in reality uh, and get it all on, on camera so you all can see it. But here we go in an airplane and um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this thing all trimmed out. Give me a sec to get it trimmed out. Just give me a moment. And the thing I'm gonna look at here is, 
let's do, I think I'm a fan of streamlines on this one because it's not too much information, you know? Okay, no one wants to lower the flaps in evolution 180 knots. Let's, uh, about 140 knots is the speed people are very happy to lower the, the flaps in this airplane. So I'm gonna go power off. All right, thing is pulling to the right a bit. Let's, uh, oh, no wonder. <laughs> We've got all the fuel in the right wing, nothing in the left. Put a little more fuel on the left side here. To counter it for P-factor result. Oh, beautiful. Okay, so here we go. Now, I have to just get you guys to uh, believe me when I say I'm not going to touch. Here, I'll do it this way. All right, here we go. P, I'm not touching the stick. I'm not touching the stick. Not P, sorry, not pause. Flaps, and I'm not touching the stick. You can see my hands. I'm not touching the stick. And look at that nose coming up. Why is that? This is something people say is a bug, even though it's really not. The real airplane will do it. Well, look at the streamlines. All of a sudden, look how the streamlines are absolutely smacking. Let's see if I can change the camera so you can, and I'm not in the way. Okay, look how the streamlines come down. What's happening is the air is hitting that wing, and with those gigantic flaps coming down, you can literally see the air getting kicked down. And it's also colored, by the way. Yellow means it slowed down a bit. Red means it slowed down a lot. And so what happened is, first the, the air was slowed down by the prop up here, by the way, since I'm at idle, and then kicked down by the downwash of the wing, decelerated by the drag of the flaps. Remember, if the flaps have drag, they're gonna slow the air down. Decelerated by the drag of the flaps, coming down at an angle, smacking down on the top of the horizontal stabilizer and therefore pushing the tail down. So now you see why the nose comes up in the simulator, and I promise you it happens in the real airplane too, when you lower the flaps. You've got this streamline coming down that comes down onto the horizontal stab and pushes the tail down. Now some people in the comments might say, well, wait a minute, I don't see the nose come up whenever they lower the flaps you know, on an airliner. And well, with airliners, those flaps come down into teeniest, teeniest, tiniest little increments, and the pilots are always gonna trim that out. As soon as the, if, the, if they lower a little bit of flaps and the nose starts to come up a little bit, then they're just gonna ease forward on the stick or ease forward on the trim to hold her nice and true and level uh, as the flaps come down. So what pilots do is as they lower the flaps, they push forward on the stick, sometimes without knowing it, by the way, uh, because it's just second nature at this point, and they hold the nose uh, about level. And again, airlines take such small little steps to the flaps, you never get anything dramatic like you're seeing here. Um, okay, I feel like I've done about what I wanna do for showing how to get the joystick set up, get control continuity from the joystick all the way to the controls, or at least verify it, and see what the forces are on the airplane, and how to use the P key, the time of day, and uh, command M to see what the airplane is doing. Now, let's kick it up a notch. Um, let's go for some serious weather. Let's make this really serious. Oh, bah, 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 turbulence, ooh, 15 knot gust with a 30 degree wind shear. Um, we're gonna go with some nice uh, turbulence. And now granted, <laughs> to a certain degree, I'm kind of cheating ever so slightly because I'm really controlling the situation and I'm letting you see what's happening. But uh, what we have clearly is an airplane that's getting kicked around by all this turbulence. Is it too much turbulence? Well, you saw the gust and uh, speed and direction. And now let's see if we can find a way with these, um, with our command M to really see what the turbulence is doing. I think a really good one, so you can see the element force is there. Uh, I think a good one would be, hmm, I feel like element delta plus knots lets you actually see the, uh, the, the speed change across each bit of the wing. You see it's back to seven or eight knots back here. Uh, the forces, you can absolutely see what's going on with the turbulence. I guess another one is stream wind delta. And with stream wind delta, you can see how uh, each how, how the air is moving in three dimensions all around the airplane and why that would kick the airplane around. Um, and stream wind delta knots actually gives you the knots of, of speed. And then you can see how the streamlines are getting uh, deflected by the turbulence as well. But it's kind of a lot of information, isn't it? Let's go to data output and let's try this. What can we find here? 
Hmm. Aircraft. Ooh, aircraft point weather, temperature and pressure, aircraft point weather, precip and wind. Right, I'm going to clear all selections. I'm going to choose lines 151 and 152. You see the line numbers here. No, they're not in order because I keep changing my mind on what's the most logical order to show them, but I don't want to change their numbers. Okay, and now what we see here, all right, I'm going to use my, my most powerful tool of them all. What's the most powerful tool of them all? Remember, it only takes one finger. Boop, P, the P key. So let's take a look at our data output here. What we see is that our wind is 9.37 knots from 232 degrees, and uh, the velocity, is, the vertical speed is 127 feet per minute up. Right, wind has a vertical component too, even if people don't talk about it much. And then as I unpause, you can see it changing. You can see the wind going to different values, three, four, five, six knots from 250 degrees. And so you can see that the motion of this airplane, it's not due to some sort of a flight control problem with the airplane, it's due to the wind that we're in. Okay, now I'm gonna try a little sneaky uh, curveball here. I'm gonna go to edit failures and let's see, world, somebody help me, <laughs> somebody help me find microburst. Yeah, y'all can't help me, this isn't live. Um, let's fail the microburst. Okay, done, apply changes. And now we, we've got a microburst. And so the speed on the airplane, uh, I guess microburst really happened near the ground. So it's not gonna help us out a lot here. Near the ground uh, is when microburst come in. So I'm kind of, yeah, we're still getting some speed. We're still getting about 15 knots or so. But you can see the speed in the direction changing. And uh, let's do, here we go, streamlines, weight turbulence, microburst. Oh, haha, uh, look at that. <laughs> We're, oh, we, we flew out past the edge of the microburst here. But um, if we did fly into the microburst, which maybe I can do, here we go, let's make it so we can really see it. If I flew into the microburst, then we'd really be able to see uh, that wind speed change. And we'd start to have a better idea of why the airplane is not doing what we expect. Oh my gosh, our wind vertical speed is now down to negative 3,000 feet per minute. hey -oh. Okay, and so now we're flying in that descending column of wind underneath the uh, microburst. And so not only do we have that command M until we look at microburst available. Oh my God, look at those trees. Look at the trees. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm adding power. Adding power. Woo! Ho oh. ho. You see, if I didn't have that microburst force visualization on or, or, or velocity vector visualization on, I might have wondered why those trees suddenly rushed up at me. And then I might have emailed the creator of X-Plane and said, hey, why did, why did my airplane descend? And since that means I'd just be emailing myself, I wouldn't accomplish much, would I? So uh, instead, thank goodness we have that microburst uh, visualization. Uh, and that showed us uh, what the microburst velocity vectors were doing and thank goodness we have our wind speed and knots and vertical speed here in data output. And so the really important thing to understand is data output. So, all right, I guess I guess that's all I can think of to tell you for how to tell what's going on. Um, we've covered using the pause key to stop and figure out what's going on. Setting the weather to clear, to remove weather and wind from the equation. Uh, setting the time of day to day so you can see what's going on. Hitting command M to work through all the velocity vectors acting on the airplane and forces acting on the airplane. Uh, going to show flight model forces to actually see the lift on each bit of the aircraft. Make sure your flight controls are reflected as much as you think they are. Going to joystick setups and setting everything to all linear so that you have a nice linear joystick control. Um, going to data output to see joystick deflections and flight control deflections. So make sure your joystick control is making it all the way out to the airplane. And then if you want to turn on weather, which you should only do after you've gotten the airplane flying perfectly on a clear day, turn on the weather, then you can go back to data output and output the wind and whatnot acting on the aircraft. So these are the steps I go through to see uh, why an airplane is doing what it's doing. And when people email me, <laughs> I wind up always explaining all this to them in some internal email, but now I'm just going to send them a link to this YouTube video. Uh, peace out or whatever the YouTubers say. <laughs>